Okay, today's date is uh, February the 24th. It's uh, 6.58 p.m. Spokane time. We're at the uh, Washington State Patrol Post north in Spokane. I'm in an office with uh, Investigator Snowden from the Prosecutor's Office and Anthony Young. Uh, do, do you know why we're here, yeah. Anthony? Yeah. What, what, why are we here? I'm uh, just trying to clear up some stuff from the past, probably. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, we talked to some people uh, here in, in Spokane, in, in the area here, and I guess uh, the information they've got is that, that you're telling them that, uh, 23, 24 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, that the information that you testified to uh, in the Lisa Buckley case uh, was not accurate. What well, can can you enlighten us a little bit on that? Well, let's see, it was fabricated. It was fabricated mm -hmm. by who? I mean, uh, well, mainly me. Um, and uh, Judy Stoner. You and Judy Stoner? Mm -hmm. I'm going to set this over here so I can try to get your voice, okay? Explain to me what was going on or what happened. Rick was killed, obviously, um, by Billy, and uh, he was pretty much off, got off on it. Um, for self defense or whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole family was pretty upset. And, uh, Judy, of course, being a part of the POMC, they met with the Buckleys and Judy came to me and She knew her kids, you know, they were Alan and David. She knew they were going to kill him. Um, Judy, Judy knew who was going to kill him. And Judy knew that there was somebody was going to kill David before it was all said and done. Whether we had to blow something up or uh, shoot him right in front of the cops or whatever it was, somebody was going to do something. How does she know that? Got feeling, or she just she knows her sin. She knows her kids, and it was talked about kind of amongst the mates. You know, it was talked about amongst people in private. There were several things that were set kind of into motion, and uh, I fur fucked up and. Uh, Caught with a bunch of fucking bullshit. And Who did? Jim Ferguson. Ferguson? Yeah. He was supposed to fucking. He was supposed to handle blowing up uh, an enclosure that had a billion at one point. And this was all because why? Because David was vindicated basically on the on the charges for shooting Pete and for Rick. David or Billy? Billy. So David David was there, but it was Billy mm -hmm. actually done the shooting. So after Billy got found not guilty on Rick, you guys came up with this plan? Well, we came up with, we with several plans. Uh, and the number one plan, I think, was obviously everybody wanted him dead. Um, but I think uh, Judy didn't want to lose another son. 
Judy came to me and asked me if uh, if I thought I could pull off a line to the police and then, well to the uh, the judge in order to convict him of something that he didn't do. Um, that was the only way that we could, uh, I think she felt that they would be satisfied as far as, and they being the brothers, Dave, Rick, and Alan, um, and Don. And getting the only thing worse than death would be to fucking put him in prison for the rest of his life with a great beef. So when did Judy come to when did Judy come to you? <clears throat> I don't know exactly when Judy came to me, but I do know it was sometime after the after the uh botched attempt by Ferguson. Um, explain the uh, explain the botched attempt by Ferguson. Well, Jim, was, he was supposed to, because he had, he knew who Billy's lawyer was. He knew that Billy was frequenting his lawyer's office during the, that first uh, case. In the shooting case of Shambhal? Yeah. Well, not necessarily, because Billy was, Billy was wrapped up in a couple different cases there. Um, if I remember correctly, the, the case that, uh, and there were witnesses that seemed like they were coming out of the woodwork on, you know, this or that, yeah, they were, uh, I happened to live geographically right in the same area as the you know, Cedar Lake. And uh, Billy um, wasn't very well liked amongst the ranks of uh, y'all. County officials. I don't really think none of the stoners were either, but at that point, um, the Buckleys were involved, and the Buckleys uh, had a few more strings they could pull than Judy, I think, did. Because they came in and uh, eventually met. Uh, well, it was Mary Buckley that came in and met me with, uh, with Judy. And they basically offered a, pretty much, you know, because I had some bullshit warrants and stuff at the time. And it was nothing, um, but I wanted to help with whatever I could. Uh, these are guys I grew up with, so I was looking to help out in any way I could. And Let's go back. You said you had some bullshit warrants at the time. Uh, you were what, about 17 when this happened? Yeah. So you had juvenile court warrants? Yeah. Was you, on, you were on probation then, bro? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you said that Mary Buckley and Judy Stoner met with you. Is that, what, is that do I understand that correctly? Yeah. Where did that occur at? It occurred at uh, motel um, right there on in Glenwood, right off Thirty Five. I forget what the motel's name was. Was it Sundown Motel at that time? Maybe. Um, this is a small motel right by the outdoor theater that was worked. Uh, we met there and it was a pretty secretive meeting. I remember, you know, Mary didn't want really anybody knowing. 
I'm at uh, Yeah, I met Judy down there. Um, <clears throat> Judy basically had me tell my story to Mary, like I was telling it to a judge or telling it to a cop or whatever. As, as just to see, it. she wanted to see how convincing I could be. Judy did or Mary did? Mary wanted to know, wanted to see, it, just to get a gauge of of how well I, I was able to, to maintain my story is the way, I mean, that's my perception of the meeting because she seemed a little reluctant at first and then by the end of the meeting I pretty much had a believing that I could fucking pull it off. And so Mary Buckley was in on the plan to fabricate the charges? What she you? believed that honestly, she believed that we were targeting the right man. Um, it wasn't until later on that, uh, when I found out that uh, that uh, it wasn't the, the right man. She, for some reason, believed in her heart that, that Billy did it. Um, physical evidence but, uh, later on when uh, when they allowed me access to look at pictures and things like that evidence uh, is when I finally realized that uh, it wasn't Billy that committed the crime when you said later somebody on, else when you said later on when they finally let you look at uh, pictures and stuff who's they well, <clears throat> because of the the nature of the deception, so to speak, um, there was only a few key people that were involved in conversations where we were talking about with free will and with uh, you know where everybody in the conversation was knew that what what the plan was was. Um, Frank Ford uh, was one. David Linloff, two, Rebecca Ferguson, three, um, somebody else, two, I can't quite remember who it was at this time. As far as Provo County officials go, that's this, those three knew, without a doubt, uh, what the plan was. Um, Them three knew that your testimony was going to be fabricated? Yes. Because it was them that supplied me with, with uh, the pictures and information that, that I needed in order to, to fabricate the story in the way I did. Um, so you're saying that Mary Buckley, Becky Ferguson, Frank Ford, and Dave Winlaw was in on the plan for you to testify falsely in court? Right. And, uh, Judy knew about it, but Judy and Judy was really the mastermind of the whole thing. Uh, she pretty much was the person that was convincing everybody else that we could we could pull this off. Um, and Buckley, of course, who was convinced that David had gotten off with killing her daughter. What do you mean, Billy? Uh, yeah, I keep saying David because I've talked to David recently and I've talked to him a lot more so than I have. David Billy. Scott. Yes. Okay. He keeps contacting me, and uh, you know him and Moody, uh, John Moody. Um, you know they they want me to, and they pretty much, you know, uh, were the reasons I came back there the first time, and because I, you know, as I've gotten older, I've gone through many court battles um, myself. Some where I was innocent, um, and some where I was not so innocent. And uh, I've tested our justice system. Um, I've been to five or six trials. Um, and it's not the justice system that's, that's fucked up, really. I found that the justice system, if you push it to the limit, it will work. Uh, it does work, um, even in the, 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 the accused's favor. Tony, are you related to the stoners? Not by blood, but but 
Because we kept hearing that Rick was like your uncle or something. Rick was very close to me. And you considered him an uncle or something? Well, I named my first son after him. Okay. Um, so you were just good friends with him and you considered him like an uncle? Yeah, and Rick's brother, David, was my mom's boyfriend as I grew up. Um, and they were all, you know, those guys were all affiliated with some of the outlaws and the horsemen. Did you know Pete Rubush too? Yeah. Because your mom lived there in New Hope, didn't she? Yeah. Right like there at the edge of New Hope? Yeah. I remember when she lived there. Yeah, and I knew Pete and his, and his son and uh, uh, Pete. Did you in, live there in New Hope too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just briefly and whenever I was in, the, in there, I was in and out. Uh, so you're saying your motivation, I guess Mary's motivation, is because she thought Billy did it. So she wanted Billy to, um, you to be a witness to, to right. help convict him because she felt he did it in her heart. Right. And your motivation was because he got off on killing Rick Stoner exactly. that you wanted him to pay for that. Exactly. That, that's what that I was saying. our way. We, I mean, we both wanted the same thing in common, only for the wrong reasons. Um, you know, because the longer and the more I've thought about it over the years, the more it bothers me that, um, especially being one that, I mean, I've stood in front of a jury and been guilty of something, and I've had that jury come back not guilty. And I've also been stood in front of a, of a, of a jury and, or a judge and, where I was accused of something that, that, uh, I, that I, I wasn't guilty of doing, and they, they, they believed it. And it's, it's, it's the worst thing, really. Um, you know, it's when you're being accused of something that you know you didn't do, but you, you feel like your unsurmountable uh, opponent has you beat by just sheer, you know, uh, power. Now, when I read the, the police report, it shows that Frank Ford came to talk to you around New Paris or somewhere, and you took off running on foot because you had them warrants. Right. And then your girlfriend at the time uh, mm -hmm. helped you... Help Frank get you to come in. Yeah, was was that part of a setup? What was the well? The, the, because I wasn't quite aware that Frank was going to be the, the the contact guy, the guy that was initially going to contact me and say that he had heard that I had information, and they were trying to keep it on a legitimate uh, legitimate level of uh, you know professionalism. I wasn't supposed to have really any contact with Frank and. Um, and I, they never gave me his name or who it was going to be. I knew I had warrants, but and, and they just said that somebody was going to contact me and that I would know who it was. And who told you that? Um, that's what uh, Judy told me and Mary Bu Mary Buckley. Pretty much, uh, she told me in front of Mary. So I guess it was kind of, you know, that was I knew that was how it was going to go down. I knew that a cop was going to uh, approach me. And uh, however, I didn't. You know, I had previously known Lynn Loft, but I didn't know. I I didn't know that he was involved in it until a little bit later on. Had you ever talked to Dave Lynn Loft about this case? Oh about yeah, the, yeah, the oh, yeah, Scott case. Not, not, yeah, but not not so much on the record, or not so much. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I honestly wouldn't have pegged him as an insider until later on. What was that conversation? You said you it was because he the was the one that at first initially tried to contact me to find me. Um, he was leaving his cards everywhere I would fucking show up at, and then people would say, hey, "Man, Lindloff was here. He left a card." And I always remember his business card. You know, I had a little set of eyes on it that said, "I'm been looking for you." and and uh, so it was kind of intimidating in that manner to where I felt like I guess I viewed him as not one a part of the team until later on. So the the trial on Rick Stoner and Pete Rubush and Jimmy Ferguson was over. You were ticked off at the results. We were very upset. And so then you made up this fabricated story after the trial. Uh, yeah, the, the fabrication of this story never came along until after the, the, the results of that trial. Because we, honestly, I think they, they, because Judy kept telling all, all of the boys, basically, to let, let justice do its thing. 
Right. And justice did its thing. And, uh, I mean, they were going to fucking kill him, without a doubt. Um, I've thought about that over the years because Who, I know... Somebody was going to kill this guy, Billy Scott, you mean? I, I, knew, I knew those guys, like, I mean, like, like friends, like really close friends. I mean, uh, as, even for as young as I was, I dealt with them on a pretty... Uh, a, a pretty high level for a long time before all this happened and uh, I was literally on that street you know when uh, the shots were fired um, and then to find out what had happened and then trying to piece it together from there it was it was really kind of fucked up because um, you know, basically started, you know, the whole thing started initiated was from a young girl who said she had been uh, <clears throat> approached by Billy and was, uh, was, you know, talked to inappropriately or whatever. Is that true? That was, uh, we found later on, uh, and this is a conver coming from a conversation I had with Billy that, uh, that Amanda, the child, was, was, I don't know, roughly 12, 13, 14, but uh, was pretty promiscuous anyway at that age. And uh, What was Amanda's last name? I, I want to say Owens. Um, she, have you talked to Billy Scott? I have talked to Billy. Well, I haven't talked to Billy Scott since the trial, no. i talked to David several times, John Moody several of their representatives you know because they've been trying you know i made contact at first uh, on a forum online forum that back there and uh at first they didn't believe me you know when i told them that who i was um but it's been bothering me since judy died and uh bud died People were dying, I mean, it, it, and it seemed like a long time had passed. The more I got experienced in the job, because I went on to do a lot of things as far as maybe the crime, the criminal life goes, um, and I was able to, uh, you know, I always had this attitude about how the justice system kind of works for whoever fucking pays it. Um, so you're, you're saying that you weren't at that party at all that night? I was never at the party, no. There was, somebody had said that your sister Lori was there, but you weren't there, is that true? No. She wasn't there either? No. Okay. So the story about seeing them with fireworks there? No. You didn't see that? No. Getting into the electric fence when you climbed over the fence, that no. didn't happen? No. What None happened What happened with the uh, polygraph that you passed? That was uh, Frank Ford, um, it was Judy. And Frank basically collaborating that they came up with a plan that uh, and Judy I talked with extensively about it but Frank is the one that actually gave, gave me the medication um, I forget exactly what the medication was I just remember him right on the way to he drove me to Columbus himself so you took that at BCI yeah and uh, he gave me the medication. We stopped from Burger King for lunch, and I remember taking the medication just shortly before we went in there. And he just kept reassuring me that as long as I kept an open mind and just and thought about something completely irrelevant um, to the case and thought about it consistently, um, that that I would be golden. You know, he said it'd be fine, absolutely fine, because it was based on nerves and. The, such and such and that uh, and that uh, he could so you didn't see Lisa laying on the ground and God I was Bill never at the party I honestly don't know that I've ever my sister was friends with Lisa um, my sister's name was also Lisa but I know I remember her and we talking about her in high school but I don't believe that I've ever actually met Lisa Buckley I couldn't even tell you really what uh, what she looked like um, until after I'd seen pictures and stuff that Frank had showed me. Not only that, I mean Frank actually took me to out to the lake and showed me things that Frank showed you what the how things were set up so you know how to yeah. tell them what happened. Right. Is that what you're saying? Right. Anybody else? 
participate in that Larry Swihart. First visit was, was... What about Larry Swihart? Because he questioned you, too. Right. Larry Swihart, I think to them they had to, they, they felt safe uh, with Larry Swihart because the Larry didn't come on to the case until a little bit after the fact. Okay. And uh, by the time Larry had come on, I was pretty well versed in the story that I had come up with. Um, so you think Larry Swihart thought your story was legitimate? Exactly. So yeah. Larry wasn't in on the plan. Right. Larry, I don't think had, I think Larry might have had suspicions of that because of the fact that, that uh, just for the simple fact that um, he, he wasn't available for the the, uh, the time when Frank picked me up and took me out to the actual scene of the crime. So Larry never went out there. But right. Out there. At least not with anybody but I mean my first initial visit to that crime scene was me and, and Frank Ford alone. Did you ever go out there with Larry and Frank? I did um, but it was later on I think it, uh, also with uh, Dave Lenlaw. So how did you know how how do you know that Becky Ferguson knew that your testimony was fabricated? How did I know that? Mm -hmm. um, I, you know what, in, in all honesty, and what I'm trying to do right now is, uh, in all honesty, I would have to say that I was more or less speculating that, and it was no, it was, it had more to do with the fact that the conversations that her and I had, uh, right during the trial in the motel room, um, some late night visits, um, um, you know, to her her hotel room, and uh, where was this hotel? She had you in her hotel. Uh, yeah. What was that for? I'm not exactly sure what it was for, other than the fact that they wanted to be able to keep in close proximity to me during the trial. Um, Were you staying at the <coughs> hotel, and she come yeah. visit you there? Yeah. Okay. They, well, they had put you up at a hotel yeah. because this trial was in Hamilton, correct? Right, right. Because and, uh, you it was Frank Ford that actually came down. I was living in Kentucky at the time. Um, I was a little skeptical, you know, because uh, you know, some people were saying, well, the Scots, you know, as soon as they find out that you're fucking, you know, what's going on here, they're going to fucking want to kill you. Uh, I was mainly coming. My, of course, my mom was concerned, and she really didn't know much, but she could tell what was going on as it was unfolding, and she just kind of was like hoping that it went through and didn't blow up in her face, and because um, it was pretty nerve-wracking when the trial time, the day it was it came up, and it was really time to get, I mean, get down to business and fucking. And go in here and convince uh, the world that Billy Scott did something that he didn't do. Now, how did you know that Dave Lindloff? I mean, you said Frank was in on it, but how did you know that Dave Lindloff was in on it too? Well, because the because the mainly because of the visit that him and Frank and I had back to the crime scene, um, because there were several things that we didn't go over the first time, Frank and I that the. That Dave was Dave was pretty pretty thorough with everything. Wanting, to, I mean, he he made sure details that I that I knew, and even even more so, he I recall he had some pictures uh, available of the party that he let me view uh, during the walk around um, of of the lake, which gave me almost a, uh, the idea of being there. So you're saying Dave Lindloff showed you things that he wanted you to testify about? Right. Well, he was giving me information on the, the party. He wanted. He uh, he wanted to more than anything. He he kept wanting me to to try to. He kept showing me these pictures, wanting me to try to pick somebody out of that lineup, somebody in that pictures that would know me, somebody that that would you know that could testify that they see me there or that. I mean, if you look back on it, there's not one person at that party that will ever say that they see me there. Um, that's That was one of my biggest concerns. Um, it never came up, of course, because I think our prosecutor was in the, the idea, in the, the, she was able to uh, direct uh, things and 
away from that that general direction of questioning um, in the courtroom. Um, you know, and I still remember David or Billy standing up in that courtroom and, and fucking just fired up, mad, fucking, and he looked right at me and he said, um, yeah, "I did not kill Lisa Buckley." And he was looking me right in the eyes and. and I kind of salivated him because that's ultimately what I wanted to see from him was the fucking I wanted to see him going down I wanted to see him knowing that he was going down for something that he didn't do and I almost I almost just wanted to shake my head shake my head at him and tell him yeah, I know you didn't do it um, but you did kill my friends and uh, for that you're you know you're gonna burn in hell basically kind of thing and Tony, do you remember when, uh, and I know it's been 20-some years ago, but do you have any clue of, of from the time of the shooting to the, tri uh, to the trial that Billy Scott went through on the shooting, when did this, when did this, these meetings that, that you say you had and stuff, when did all this stuff occur? Do you have any Give me recollection of that. Well, it occurred in uh, you know because Lisa Buckley's uh, murder had been unsolved for some time before that, and because I think Billy's name was mentioned uh, during that investigation and then it was released, I think. Just the simple mentioning of that gave Mary Buckley something to fucking to cling to. And the minute that Judy Stoner and Mary Buckley had had set their sights on him as the the one, there was going to be no stopping them. Somebody was either going to kill David or Billy. Um, but and that's more or less the way Mary was satisfied. Mary would have been satisfied with him getting killed. Um, especially if it didn't cost her anymore, you know. But Judy wasn't so keen with the idea because she didn't like the idea of one of her sons, you know, losing the rest of his freedom uh, or being in trouble or uh, something over killing. So this silly. Because we had somebody in place that was gonna fucking that, that was gonna t to terminate uh, Billy at some point during that process. And that one, that person was a family member that was willing to do it. Uh, we just didn't want it to come to that. We didn't want. We didn't feel like we wanted to lose another family member to that. So this was after uh, the trial, where he was found not guilty. Right. 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 Well, see, that's pretty much where. That's when. That's uh, when all this. When POMC evolved into this group, mm -hmm. uh, and they started holding meetings. That's when things started to, to really materialize because you got Judy Stoner and you got Mary Buckley. You know, Mary Buckley was a pretty, they were pretty prominent. They had some, uh, they had some, uh, some pull around the courthouse, so to speak. And, uh, Judy as well had worked in the courthouse for some time. Um, she was a maintenance woman. Yeah, and she had some people in the courthouse that worked. Um, kind of on her side and she had manipulating power that she definitely used uh, when the time was right um, she used it when, when you went in and when you fabricated this thing and the, this all came out how long after he was found not guilty on Rick did, did you come in and start talking to him or you recall that I recall that uh, because they were immediately trying to kill him, they immediately the plans went into motion from after several. After he was found not guilty. No, after the uh, the, the initial uh, murder, uh, okay. especially when the the brutality uh, the, you know, with P, um, his P, I believe, was didn't die from a gunshot wound. He died from blunt trauma to the head. Uh, um, and Pete's son, and uh, there were so many other people. There was people that just wanted to, wanted him to pay. And um, Mary Buckley, like I said, at that point would have been completely satisfied with a downright fucking hit. Just somebody to just take him out. 
she just wanted to know that he was no longer on the same planet as she was. And well, your motivation, you said, was after Rick got killed, yeah, because he was like your uncle. That you, that's when you got involved in this, right? right? right. How long after he that trial? Do you recall that you went and started? Working we went. On? We went right to work, pretty much. Right I mean, after that trial. Right, even even before that trial, they were trying to pull shit. I mean, and everybody was kind of jockeying for position, but there, I mean, I've never seen, I've never been a part of something where so many people wanted some one person dead um, and would really stop at nothing to get it. That's why when the idea was that your anger to get involved was after the shooting. Okay. Yeah, well, Rick was a, a very good friend of mine, and right. I, and a, an impact on me as a child, and uh, I grew up with him, and I mean, every day, every night, and he accepted me, and um, there were times when, uh, you know, I used to run around and fucking rip off everybody and their brother over there, so... I did mean, you stay with Stone or something? I did stay with him for quite a while, and I, I sold him a lot of guns, um... It got to the point where it blew into the, a really big thing because, I mean, all over Dark County and, and Preble County alone, um, I was bringing in thousands and thousands of guns uh, pretty on a pretty good basis. Um, Tony, have you ever talked to anyone from the Ohio Innocence Project? I have. Uh, not until recently, in recent years, but, you know, long after everything that had been fall into place because my job was just to disappear after that once he, he was convicted to just disappear stay low and not talk to anyone about it and I mean literally and I just left it in my past and moved away um, I didn't necessarily change my lifestyle uh, but how long ago did you talk to them I've talked to well within the last few years I've talked to Jim Ferguson I'm talking about the Ohio Innocence Project. Oh, well, I talked to them. Uh, well, the federal case that I beat here back in 2010, um, when I got uh, when I when I was released, I opted to get the hell out of town for a minute because uh, was that a counterfeiting or something? Counterfeiting and weapons. Yeah, they were trying to get me f for something, but uh, I felt pretty damn lucky when I came out of that one so I just decided um, you know I wanted it I wanted to to let people know do you know who killed Lisa Buckley I have a pretty good idea who you think who killed Lisa Buckley the only reason I know this is because I during that time of that party I actually lived outside of a friend of mine's house in, in New Paris um, and his name was Rodney Knox and uh, that's who you suspect? No, no. Oh. Rodney. Rodney had a friend of his that I recently. Rodney's met. the one supposedly told you where the party was, right? Right. Okay. And uh, um, Rodney was a really good friend of mine, but um, there was a guy that lived out front of Rodney's house. They had a van there, and he actually was from Big Pine Keys, uh, the same place that Billy and uh, David had came from. A white van. Yeah, and he, uh, he, him and I became friends to a certain degree, and we hung out, we did a lot of things, and fucking, uh, he told me a lot, and, you know, I, I, I pick up on people, you know, and I could tell there was something pretty dark about him, especially with, with the ladies. I never really had any trouble, um, and but you I, don't know his name? Yeah, I know his name. What's his name? His name's Jason Weaver. Do you know where he lives now? I couldn't begin to tell you. I've looked on Facebook. I've looked everywhere. I've not been able to positively ID where Weaver went. Why do you we suspect him? Weaver you? told me um, that he didn't go to the party, that he was supposed to go, and he didn't go to the party. Um, he then disappeared pretty much into thin air. And then when I was obviously, I, I mean, I wasn't even, I was in court, in the courtroom in the, uh, Hamilton County when I actually seen uh, the picture of, at, that was taken at the party that night that had Jason Weaver in it. 
Oh, he was in the picture at the party. Yeah. And I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. Uh, at that point, obviously, I'm in front of a whole cr world of crowd, and, and it affected me pretty greatly because I knew how Jason was with women, and I had heard about an incident that, and that ultimately led to him leaving Florida. Um, a similar incident where a, a woman was was attacked and. Um, you know, I just kind of blew it off as just, you know, people talking, but um, obviously at that point it kind of came into a surreal... Uh, what did, you said you talked to David Scott. When was the last time you talked to him? He attempts to talk to me quite often, but I don't know, on Facebook, but I don't, check, I don't get on Facebook very often. Usually every time I get on Facebook, I have something on there from him, you know. And uh, him and I, you know, we've had a few words over the years because, I, you know, I went back there with the, and tried to, to do the right thing once. And I don't know, I'm not accusing anybody, but somebody dropped the ball on it and it didn't happen. Um, so here we are five years down the line and uh, he's still not out. And Who did you talk to before that you went back to? What do you mean? You said you went back there and talked to someone. Who was that? Yeah, I went back and talked to a, a, an investigator for OIP. Um, I don't re recall what his name was. Um, he wanted to know my what you know what I was saying, and uh, so I pretty much told him. You know, I told him exactly what I told you guys. And um, anything else you can think of? Not really particularly, um, nothing of any major importance other than, uh, you know, when it, eventually I knew that it was going to, deep down I knew that eventually that something was going to happen, because obviously over the years I, I realized um, you know, because the, the Scots came off with the, the, the Billy and the Innocence Billy project, you know, where they were trying to get him, you know, free Billy Scott and this and that. And I, I'd run across something like that on the internet. Somebody told me they'd, you know, that I was on the internet, and I said, no, it couldn't be me or whatever. And I looked on there, and they had some bullshit thing, you know, trying to figure out who Tony Young was. And uh, it, it, it pretty much. Uh, single-handedly just fucking made it look completely fabricated everything I said I mean if I read it today I still can't believe that it was actually that it went through like it did I, it baffles me because I mean my story wasn't that ironclad first of all and the fucking I had not one other real person that could back me up on anything um so yeah, I mean, I was pretty nervous that it wasn't gonna wasn't gonna come off. But the the closer we got to it, the closer I started, the more I started thinking, that, hey, uh, this is gonna work. Um, Where did Jason Weaver live back then? He lived in uh, New Paris, right. in a van. Um, he was kind of a Puerto Rican, somewhat. I remember he used, you know, he had Afro type hair, and he, and he was pretty well built. Um, and he was, uh, he'd go underwater in the swimming pool, and he'd come up, and his hair would like drip dry like a nigger's hair does, you know. And I don't know what it just it was something about him that just wasn't. Uh, um, he was had to been some kind of other nationality. I'm thinking Puerto Rican or Mexican or something. Maybe even you know, black. Um, so you don't remember where he lived, though. He lived in New Paris. New Paris. He was homeless, basically. He was homeless. He lived in his van. Yeah. I don't think he ever had a place that I knew of. Now I do know he originally uh, he originally moved up here from Big Pine Keys with uh, with Billy and, and and David. So he was so part they, of. The so they should know who it is. They will know who he is. Yes. Now, if, yeah, yeah, because if you ask, you know, if if you, but if you ask anybody in those pictures, they could probably tell you who Jason Weaver was.
with I was shocked to see him in that picture. That was the first picture out of all the pictures I've reviewed. The one that, that I they hand me on the witness stand one day during the during the trial um, had fucking Jason Weaver in it, and uh, without a doubt that he was standing in the background. I could barely see his eyes, and I could I don't know. I think he was throwing like a a sign or something, but there he was, man, and that motherfucker. Uh, he clearly um, lied to me for some reason and he disappeared how did Rodney Knox know him? I'm not sure how Rodney knew him I just know that Rodney um, wasn't real keen on him he was a little leery of the guy but Rodney was pretty much I mean anybody that had any drugs or something to offer he would fucking and all these guys were much older than I was at the time, too, so I don't, I mean, um, but like I said, I usually had a means of something happening because I was always out. I mean, I could fucking go on and on for days about how many places I hit and took guns out of farmhouses and fucking, I mean, thousands and thousands of guns that I was... And we got, we got they, they helped me actually, Rick and those guys helped me channel that into, this, into a lot of money. Um, we were taking them into Kentucky um, to some old guy that was related to somebody else from uh, Dark County who's no longer with us. So you said about five years ago you went back to Ohio and you talked with an investigator. You can't remember his name from the Innocence Project, correct? Um, if I heard it, I, I don't have a name to give you, but I'm just trying to. But yeah, right off the story. top of my head, I don't remember. Have they ever tried to make contact with you? Yeah, you know he's they. Somebody's hired a private investigator that's come out here, and this guy bugs the shit out of me every time I go to jail. He's here every when's, time. When's the last time? Well, every time I go to jail, the last time I went to jail, he was right there. For sure, he'll be. He was Which in jail. Was you? Spokane County, and then he actually drove at one point. He drove all the way up to Callville because I was getting ready to post bond, and he knew it. Uh, and he drove all the way to Callville, and uh, I was going to actually help the guy out. I was going to give him a, a signed affidavit, but then he wouldn't give me a ride back from Callville to Spokane. I told him to get fucked. And uh, he's like, ah, uh, but, uh, man, he pretty much dropped the ball. He's a youngster, but I think he was afraid of me to a certain extent. He didn't, I don't think he trusted me in his car or something that much, but he didn't really want to give me a ride. I just wanted to ride back to town. And <clears throat> he said uh, that he had some other business to take care of up there, but he had also told me prior to that that he'd never been to Colville. <laughs> so, I was kind of wondering what his extra business might be up there, but so he claimed he was with the uh, yeah the he, he, project, had, right? he had he uh, had affidavits he was wanting me to take a look at them, read them, sign them. Did and, you read them? Yeah, I didn't sign anything. Wow. Uh, he wouldn't give me a ride back to Spokane, so I said, "Fuck him! If he can't do me a favor by giving me a ride, then I'm not." You know, I'm not going to make him look like he fucking did his job, you know. It's just, I, it was a spy thing. Immature, but uh, at the time I was irritated that he, you know, that he, he, I knew he was going back to Spokane and he wouldn't give me a ride. That was slightly irritating. <coughs> so, so I guess at that point, because he wouldn't give you a ride, you were, you were okay with just blowing him off and, and yeah because he attacked you know it's the minute I was booked into jail again down there he was right back you know mm -hmm. um, and he this time he had, he, had, uh, he had talked to a uh, superior officer and had that officer come to me tried to to try to explain to me that you know this might be the wise thing to do and then he really you know he's yeah, the guy just fucked up all the way around obviously I'm not going to want to talk about this in front of a pod full of people right. criminals well, had you guys not see you in the pod right right, right. So. had you guys not come brought me here to talk to me about it I would have never said anything to you in the jail when I'm booked in down there it's not it's nothing personal but 
when you become the yeah, but look, it gives you a chance to talk to some people from Provo County. Well, yeah. You probably never thought of that. Yeah, happen, yeah. Right? no, and I used to like talking to my old buddies in Provo County. Um, We're just not on that list. Probably not, at least not. No, I'm a pretty until, good guy. <laughs> until now. <laughs> I know I've met you guys somewhere down the line. I remember him. I remember being out at your mom's house many times. Yeah. Um, when you were a little rascal juvenile. Yeah. Oh, some miss you, she called yeah. me out there. And I remember. Yeah, I think I remember that. She even had... You were the one that she threatened us with. And that, you, you were her ace in the hole, pretty much, but... And my mom, she's still around. She's out here, but she, you know, she's been on me about, you know, doing something about it. But I think sometimes I wonder if she doesn't uh, just make things worse. You know, sometimes I don't know. But I love my mom, but she's not. I remember she had all that stuff in the yard. She's had, well, had a lot of yard sales and stuff mm-hmm. too, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah, she's. Uh, Anything we met, we're missing here? Well, you know, nothing, nothing really, um, nothing that I can think of. I'm sure there's a few things that probably other issues that would, or things that uh, might help out down the line, but um, from the right time, I mean, if, if they're serious about doing this, uh, I would be more than willing to, to, you know, go in there and, and make the set the record straight. Um, although, you know, I've been uh, my mom's told me that Dave's against it, and who's Dave? Dave, Ray's brother. He was my stepdad for many years. Awesome. Um, and you know, we we all, you know, we were all bitter about Rick dying the way he did, but at the same time, we knew what the kind of person Rick was. And, you know, when you get older, you feel, you you, you want to try to look at situation like uh, from every perspective. And being through the court battles I've been through, and uh, I've been vindicated by a jury several times, and um, even by a judge, um, when I've had the odds stacked against me tremendously. And it feels right, you know, I mean, it feels good. Um, and I think, honestly, that, that David is, you know, you can say what you want to about his personality, but I think he deserves to have a, a, a child at some point. And I think he deserves to. Well, you mean Billy. Or, yeah, Billy. I think he deserves to, to live whatever's left of his life. And knowing that, that ultimately maybe he lost a lot of years over it, and I mean there's no worse beef to go down on than, than the one he went on, you know. Uh, he all the, I can only imagine um, the, the the bullshit that he's gone through over the years because of it. Um, and I, to tell you the truth, I would I would probably greatly benefit by it as well. And I can't tell you how many times I've I've fucking seen his face staring back at me in that courtroom, um, knowing that he didn't do it. You know, when he knew, when he knew that, because he knew the exact moment when I actually convinced everybody in that courtroom that he was the killer. He knew it because he exploded, and when he did, he looked right at me and he's like. You know, pretty much telling me that even though I, I, you're wrong, you're lying about it. You know what he wanted? It was his a, me, a feeble attempt at, at letting everybody know that he was not guilty of it, and uh, it pretty much went unheard. Um, so you were in the courtroom when they announced the verdict? Yeah, and I was. You know, I was of course. David tried to attack me outside the courtroom, and they rushed me out of there pretty quick, and. Uh, I brought that up to David last time I was talking to him, you know, he, he, uh, he wondered why I always evade him, you know, or I'm, but David's the one that, he's really fucking vocal and he's just obnoxious and, you know, uh, he's also the one that kicked the shit out of Pete when Pete was down, um, David was the one that was always overboard and, uh, we're uh, we're gonna 
take a couple minutes, and we're going to leave you right here. We'll have somebody, and we'll come back in here in just a couple minutes. We want to make sure that we cover everything with you, okay? It's all right? You need yeah, anything? Maybe okay, just another shot of water. And another shot of water. Okay. Hang tight there, okay? Young, you doing okay? Yeah, I'm alright. Alright. Thanks. Mm -hmm. What you do? Just the top and stuff out. Yeah. If, you, if you need water, get. Yeah, if we're missing any shoes, we're missing any kind of good. I know very little about it, you know. But that's what's over here, so might as well handle it the best way I can. You know, it's just trouble for you? Or it's not really real. trouble for me, it's me it's it's uh, actually a vindication for somebody else, so. so and yeah, he deserves it. He's like I said, I fucking we punished the guy basically by fucking getting convicted of a, a pretty heinous crime that he didn't commit. And he's, he's been 22 years sitting on it, so uh, we felt it was time to... Set the record straight? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it involved a pretty corrupt system, you know, a government system with Pearl County, and you know, a lot of them are dead now, but, I mean, it's... It's no, it was no big secret, really, that shit was covered up and manipulated, but it flew and costed a man pretty much half his life, so we'll see if we can't get the rest of it back. Uh, what about the... What about the... <coughs> the real person that did I crime. found out during the process, I found out who, uh, just on a fluker, and they were showing me pictures of people, and uh, it was just coincidence, but it was a guy that I knew um, who lived in a bus, basically, outside a friend of mine's house, and he told me he hadn't gone to the party, or he disappeared, and uh, they, they, during the trial they showed me pictures, and there he was. Is he still alive? I don't know. I've looked, tried to look him up on Facebook. Uh, I got a big ass scar on my arm because of that guy fucking wiping out. We were running from the cops one night. And but you were about, I think they said about 17 at the time yeah, or so? 17, 18, yeah. He rolled the car and tree stump came through the window and just peeled my arm back to my elbow. I managed to get away, but then they all got caught. And But he, uh, yeah, he was a pretty sinister fucker. Yeah, he was much older. and he moved up to, from Florida with these other guys that were ultimately convicted, so... You know, I've never been really one for snitching, but uh, in this case, I don't think it's really snitching. It's just letting somebody off the hook. Yeah, yeah. He's paid it's doing what's right. Yeah. It's doing what's right. You know, at one time, at one time we, want, we wanted him to suffer. You know, we wanted him to suffer as bad as he possibly could, but we didn't want to lose any more of our brothers uh, to have that happen. And how much is somebody going to suffer when you blow their brains out, you know? Yeah. Um, well, if you haven't <coughs> realized it, that was the... This was the whole purpose of today. I pretty much knew that. Was it, you guys wasn't seen the that warrants? I, and you guys seen that I had warrants, so that gives it a fucking. Well, yeah, we knew you had warrants, but this, this whole thing, is what precipitated coming looking for you. Otherwise, we probably wouldn't have been looking right, for you. If right. we run across you, we run across you. But right. you know, 
Um, yeah, you guys got a lot of shit to do. Yeah, you got an LFO out of Stevens County who gives a shit. That one keeps coming back all the time. It's pretty you know, much, yeah. You got it suspended here in this county. I really don't give a shit. I mean, yeah, if I see you somewhere, yeah, I'm probably going to stop you and arrest you, you know, but I'm not going to go out of my way to go looking for you. Right. You know, I haven't been over to Brit since, uh, since last time I was there. Right. You know, so... I got a phone call. I, you know, I got obviously I got a phone call, and, and I was aware that you guys were were looking. But it, I, you know, I told my girlfriend at the time. Well, she's kind of my girlfriend, not really. But I just met her, but Michelle's still my girlfriend, but she's in jail for a while. So yeah, um, I just I didn't feel like fucking running. I mean, we could have took off again, and I knew you guys sure. were coming. Uh, Glenn had told me that some, you know, that there was some vehicles up. You guys had already been there once earlier, yeah. and uh, and I, you know, I, I get to a certain point where you just don't really want to. F- I, you know, I'm not trying to. F- yeah, you're not trying. Yeah, yeah. If it comes, it comes. <laughs> right. You know, and I tell you the truth, you're not going to pick up the phone and call us and say, here, "Here I am." But for me, man, I mean, I've been fucking strung out on doing the dope and shit, and, I, and I'm trying to fucking just get all get away from it. And I don't normally fuck with the brown. I've been doing that lately, and I'm just I could use a little bit of a break and get get my head straight again. And, uh, Do you have any issues when you when you go in, you know, withdrawals or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, a little bit, but for the most part, I mean, I'm, I'm not bad. I just suck it up and take it one day at a time. This chick says she's going to take care of the Stevens County thing. If she does that, that'll fuck. I could be out as well as easy as tomorrow. Yeah. You know? um, um, yeah. And I love Brittany and the kids and all that. You know, I try to. I, she gets pissed off pretty easy. But, well, I she doesn't like Michelle, and she doesn't like me messing with Michelle. And <coughs> well, what baby mama doesn't? Though? Right. And yeah. She wanted, yeah. She wants a fucking family, and you know, she mm-hmm. wants the, the tight knit, and I can't give that to her just simply because it's not. It's just not feasible. It doesn't feel right to me, so. Um, I just try. There to will keep come it. a day where probably will. Maybe you know. You know. And Michelle's just fucking hell on wheels. I mean, that girl fucking, she's ran me straight fucking ragged. Uh, I'm surprised I, I haven't picked up a really big beef or something already with her. So I'm trying to get away from her, and this is the first chance I've had without her. So And she's got until May before she gets out. And so I met this other chick, and she's never been in trouble with the cops or anything. And, she wants to try to go a different direction. And she she looks, looks. She looks pretty hard for the wear. Yeah, I know. She's, she's been doing. She's been doing brown, I think, for pretty heavy. And she's picking. And yeah. Yeah. So I mean, she's. Yeah, you know, but she's never been in trouble, and she's she's got the right idea. She has the tools, you know, that it takes to get out of this lifestyle. She has her own home and stuff, so. It, it's just boiled down to whether or not she really wants to deal with that much. Make a choice. All right. Thank you, sir. Yep. Did you get your water, Tom? Huh? Yeah. All right. Oh, I got you more. I guess we run out. You got more. Thank you. Uh, back, Tony. Just a couple more questions. Back when all this was going on, did did you or the Stoners or anybody have any association with any biker groups back then? Um. Yeah. Um. What do you mean by associations? We were. We were. Uh, we were. Um, pretty close to quite a few people that were. Yeah. And a lot of the um, of the events that we that we had were actually you know they were put on by. Like I said, the horsemen, they had family members that were, you know, and uh, Lane Hart, L.D., you know, Mm -hmm. Jr. Um, I pretty much grew up with him, you know. Um, uh, Michael Keaton. um, So are you saying that the... Was it Rick and David and those guys? They had connections to the Iron Horsemen. Is that what you're saying? Right, and it was, it was, yeah, it was to the point where that uh, the, they wanted, 
Uh, of course, the organizations that I know that we were we were in, in touch with. Um, Pete or Rick was a was a nuisance to them. You know, and they pretty much always said that eventually Rick was going to cause something fucking you know something bad to happen. You know, he was always the one that nobody wanted to show up at the party. You know. And, uh, he crashed the band equipment and fucking wanted, you know, he, he was just a, he's a bully. Good stupid shit. Yeah, he was, yeah. They didn't want anything to do with him, is that what you're saying? Right, and uh, even his own family, I mean, Dave, just prior to that, that Christmas, Dave pretty much kicked the shit out of Rick, and, and then, uh, you know, Rick was always the first one on the scene when it came to fucking taxing somebody, though. Mm -hmm. And, uh, when he heard, you know, when we heard that Billy Owens' his daughter had been fucked with by Billy Scott, we didn't care who it was at the time. We were gonna go and, and handle it. What we should have done was find out the facts. Would have been helpful, um, but uh, Amanda's story pretty much started falling apart directly afterwards. But by that time, uh, you know, things that couldn't t be taken back were already. They were already in place. And tell me this. You uh, sent, you helped probably send a guy to prison for 20 some years for something he didn't do. What do you think should happen to that person? Um, honestly, I think he should get a chance. I think he should get a chance. And no matter how late in life it is, I don't know. You, you fabricated a story, and you lied. And you're talking and you, about me. What, what should happen? What should again? happen to you, to someone that would do that? Honestly, um, I'm not real sure. I mean, as far as a ju my own judge and jury, I would have to say um, the outside influence that I had it was definitely the key and I'm not trying to pass the buck or all because really single-handedly uh, my testimony fucking uh, convicted Billy of the crime um, it was powerful enough and believable enough that, that the people involved were convinced that he did it um, And, you know, more than anything, I, because I believe in the justice system. I really do, but that's one case um, where, and I never could have pulled that off without without the, the corrupt uh, um, officials, you know, being able to guide me through that. It's not like I had the power to just, just you know, work it all out myself, but with the, if anything at all, I would want to uh, at least expose uh, how easily it is, how, uh, you know, for law enforcement officers to to have an impact on the truth of, of the matter, um, because it you know it takes so little uh, influence from an, an officer or a judge or prosecutor um, or for that matter a, a, an angry parent you know um, but it boils down to the integrity of the people involved investigating that and I think so if I'm getting this right you don't think anything should happen to you due to the corruption of the officials that were involved in it I don't want to, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm trying, I feel like I was innocent in the whole thing because, you know, if anything, I mean, I would, I would, uh, I would like to at least help raise the awareness, um, to people how important it is to, to, to tell the truth in a situation. You prison? I mean, I've been to prison before and I probably, um, I don't want to jinx myself, but I, you know, it's likely that I could see it again at some point, um, because just because I know myself, um, 
the one thing I've always learned from this as, as I've gone on in my life is the fact that um, and when I'm in jail this last time in jail I, I, I experienced I had an experience that would get that gave me a fucking kind of an eye-opener um, you know people in positions of power um, can really dictate whatever they want um, the people you know institutions the jails the officers that have the, the power to write reports and say whatever it is they want to say and, the, and pretty much are going to get they got people standing behind them as well those people have to understand how important it is that they they're honest about shit like that now I've seen honest people where I was expecting a cop to lie and he didn't you know um, I was like in prison when I insulted the officer there it wasn't that I assaulted him I was defending I was defending myself as a person and um, I thought I was fucked, but when I came in front of that DOC hearings officer, um, he had done his research, and he knew something that I didn't know. Um, I was looking at a lot more time, and I was looking at uh, uh, losing any good time, and here this DOC officer came off and told me, you know, well, we've had this problem with this officer many, many times, and but immediately it... it, it shocked me that the, he was actually had realized that look this officer's making a habit of doing this to you, people you well look at this in a perspective that at least I'm looking at this you're saying that Dave Lindelof was involved in this Frank Ford was involved in this Becky Ferguson was involved in this Mary Buckley was involved in this yeah. Judy Stoner was involved in this now I, I would maybe one officer being involved but how do you get all of these people that to go along with it at the same time and no one ever say that we you know how 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 does that stay quiet how does that and how do you get that many people to work together on something i'll tell you how it's it what it boils down to to me is you've got you've got people that are investors and then you got the people that uh, you know they'll invest there basically because the prosecutor and there's a few people that knew that we were going to try this, but the minute it fell apart, they were washing their hands of it. Um, and I think the closer we got to trial, and then, and then when we're actually in that hotel room, I was racking that bill up. You know, and they, I remember they getting the shitty with me about the bill afterwards. Because I know that if I went to the sheriff and said, hey, sheriff, I'm going to have Tony come in, I'm going to have him lie for me in court. See, it doesn't work that like would, that. That wouldn't work out for me. It does not work like that. But if you look back a little bit in history before all this happened, before this here and before the, the, the murder of Rick and Pete um, um, and Fur getting shot, then you'll notice there was a couple court cases that Billy had. He was up against uh, Preble County and a couple different cases uh, where I believe he, he came out uh, okay. And uh, I think he ruffled a few feathers under in the Preble County. Uh, so you know, you're thinking that they made this all to get even with him for him getting... Ultimately, I believe that, yes, Preble County had a, a vested interest in putting Billy Scott away. Now, I probably rightfully so. Now, by the morals of man, because Billy Scott was a fuck. I mean, he was a fucking punk. I mean, I knew him growing up, too. I mean, this is a guy that traveled, traveled around with an axe handle in the back of his, win his truck window, and he bullied people, and he sold drugs, and fucking... He was not a model citizen, citizen by any means. However, um, when you... And he was cocky. And when you get like that, and you're cocky towards the the people that are, you know, trying to prosecute you or trying to bring you to justice, then you you tend, especially once you're victorious once or twice over them. I mean, I've experienced this myself. You become a little bit more cocky and you become arrogant, and you can twist. I mean, we're all human, 
um, and you can twist things a certain way any way you want and his dad obviously at one point thought that they had enough money and enough push and that they could fucking railroad through a place like Preble County and it showed you know I think on several occasions where they they showed a demonstration of that and it ruffled feathers um, and you get you get that had to happen to different dialects of people different pe people from different you know backgrounds and all of a sudden you all three of those groups have an, uh, an, an opportunity to take part in a, a hush hush just kind of let it go and see how how far it goes thing um, because I remember it was frustrating for me when I first met with, with Miss Buckley because she seemed to be skeptical about it. Or not Miss Buckley, but uh, the prosecutor, uh, Ferguson. She ultimately, I don't think she was probably, if I had to guess, she was probably one of the biggest skeptics during the whole thing because she was the one that just kept, she would try to crack me in every different direction. And then finally, I think when she uh, right up to the night before the, my first testimony, she fucking she tried to get me to fucking to to snap in some way or to fuck that story up, you know, or to slip up somewhere. And I think that's when she finally realized that okay, this kid, I think this kid's gonna be able to, to go in here because she was concerned, obviously, about me just sitting in the courtroom and obviously just blowing everybody out of the water. So you, you felt that she had grilled you enough that Becky Ferguson felt that you could get by with the lie in court? Right. She was, I think at first she was concerned about me turning on them, um, you know, I, which is a legitimate concern, um, she, you know, because they had to, ended up ultimately having to come and pretty much drag me into the fucking, you know, they coaxed me down there pretty much because I had moved to Kentucky. I was dodging them here and there. It was, it, cause, and in the back of my mind, it's obviously because I'm knowing that it's, I'm lying, right? I'm gonna, they're gonna get me in here. I gotta fucking, uh, basically, I'm gonna have to fucking be on my toes every day because these guys are gonna be questioning me, and I'm getting questioned not only from them but cross-examined by his, his attorneys, you know, who really, uh, if they would have had their shit together, they could have picked this apart, one right after the other. I mean, looking back on it, because I've studied it a little bit over the years, and the, the fucking uh, just downright blatant, I mean, some of the shit just it was totally just off the wall. This did not make sense. It didn't fit together. The pieces weren't right. Uh, honestly, looking back on it, I don't know how it ever got as far as it did. Um... But as far as punishment goes, I mean, I don't want to go to prison, obviously not, and I don't know what the statute of limitations is, but what I, my main intentions here, uh, I think, are to um, make this, make it right. Because um, there was an innocent man that was convicted of something that he didn't do, um, and then obviously that leaves out, the, the, uh, you know, who did do it. Um, well, we appreciate you coming. Yeah, two questions. Are you, are you involved in any uh, motorcycle gangs or anything now? I don't know no, what they have out here. I've never been affiliated with any gangs okay. since then. Um, those guys gave me a pretty... I mean, I remember shortly after that, I was pretty, I was, treated, I was treated amongst the ranks pretty much as a... You know, they, I could fucking... I, and I still do. I mean, when I went back there... Um, you know, Ferguson still, you know, he got shot in the chest and survived, you know, and he was fucking st talking about the bikes that he was going to buy with the payments. And, you know, we and he, and he was one of the ones that really fucked up uh, a lot of shit. But uh, my whole intentions here, if, if, I, if I'd like to see one thing, it would be that I'd like to see Billy on the street uh, with, a, with a one chance, even if it is a shorter chance. I'd like to see him with with a um, an opportunity to to make a life for himself to some degree and to save whatever's left and uh, just do the right thing. One final question, just because we have to ask, but 
have you been offered anything by anybody to change uh, to change the story? I haven't been offered anything from anybody for any any part of the story. Uh, not from OIP, OIP or uh, um, you know I was on the forums there for a little while and then people they I, most people didn't even believe it was me when I was talking on there you know so yeah, that was frustrating. I even got banned from a few that you know because they thought I was just some heckler trying to start trouble or whatever. But um, no, the only thing I've would like to see come of it is his ability to get his, his uh, get his freedom back, and for him to know that uh, I'm, you know, obviously I'm. Uh, I don't necessarily regret. I honestly would have to. I would be hard pressed to say that I regret doing what I did when I did it, and it would probably have to say that I would do it again in the same situation, only because. It, it felt right at the time. This guy killed somebody that was fucking uh, a hero to me, and he he did it in such brutal fashion that, that and I wasn't really counting on the cops to do anything about it, to tell you the truth. But it, when it all came down and he walked on it, I mean, I uh, I know what it's like to have a family or a clan of people that together that all believe the same thing, and we all wanted him to pay. And uh, for me to be able to get the chance to, 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 to get that um, to happen was was pretty, it was a good experience to some degree, but it, over the years it, it's settled in and it, it obviously doesn't settle too, too well when I think about it under all the reality of it is, is that an innocent man is um, we got a lot of wasted life and time that he may never catch up with. Okay. We appreciate you talking with us, alright? Mm -hmm. It is uh, 8.19 and we are going to uh, end the interview.